If you're a musician, music producer, or composer, you need a realistic orchestra library. Let's talk about that one. Welcome back my yellow subscribers. I'm back again, back onto the music side because I know I got distracted with my watch world uh, and photography. But today, I wanna revisit the music world that I enjoy. If you haven't seen my previous videos, I've covered my favorite piano, my favorite uh, violin. Uh, there's a lot of sound libraries out there and they're not all created equal. Uh, when you're using things like Logic Pro and Contact, there's tons of options and it's really hard to narrow down uh, what's that sound that you're looking for. In my case, I like to do covers. I like to do uh, orchestra arrangement type stuff um, where the, it's piano heavy with the orchestra kind of lifting that uh, melody or whatever I'm playing. Uh, having something that sounds realistic is important to me. Um, if you're working on something different, I mean, it depends on the project you're working on, but for me, finding that realistic sound where I can uh, use uh, expression, dynamics, uh, the realistic sound of an orchestra or a certain instrument, that's what I'm looking for. So if you've seen my previous videos, I have my favorite piano, my personal favorite is the Ambertone uh, Steinway D, which is the one I play, that's it. After playing so many different ones, that's my favorite, that's the most realistic one to me. Reminds me of you know learning to play uh, earlier in my life. Uh, it has that signature sound that I'm looking for. Uh, for the violin, it's the Joshua Bell Violin, also by Embertone. It's the most realistic sounding violin solo string uh, library. And if you haven't seen that video, I recommend you check it out. That will change the way you look at using instruments in your music production. They're just so realistic that with a few tweaks, um, you can make it sound where you want. And right out of the box, it's very impressive. But today I want to cover orchestras. Orchestras are just a little bit more complicated because you need that oomph, you know? It needs to sound real, it needs to sound uh, full. You need to get those tones throughout the range uh, that don't sound like a toy, that don't sound like a video game, that don't sound fake. So doing that is hard because you need to, just like any other instrument, take real life samples. But we're talking about 20, 30, sometimes 100 instruments at the same time. So it gets very complicated and how real you can make it. It takes a lot of tweaks. Uh, if you've seen videos from other people, they'll show you how they make tons and tons of layers and tracks of just orchestra to make that fullness, to divide that left from that right sound, from that center. Uh, you just expect a lot more from an orchestra because the ranges are coming from you from different directions. It's not as easy to find a good orchestra. So I have a few recommendations, uh, workarounds, so to speak, to make my orchestra sound as realistic as possible. I'm not an expert music producer. I do this for fun, for my own enjoyment. Maybe someday I'll sell something I compose. Who knows? But in the meantime, I just like playing. And so if I make something on the piano, uh, I get inspired to add more layers. And so I add my violin, I add my orchestra, my beats, my drums, whatever. Uh, so I have a few uh, orchestra libraries that I have narrowed down for what I like. So I'm gonna share that with you today. But first, let's get down to recording the sample that we're going to be using uh, to layer on that orchestra. So that's the song we're gonna be using with that recording. So let me just go really quick onto the computer, take, uh, organize the libraries I'm gonna be using and then we'll get into that. 
Okay, so you see I have tons and tons of layers that I like to play with, but what I really want to show you is how I try to recreate the best orchestra possible, the most realistic, and um, it's a combination of things. And you see I'm using a bassoon, which I think is essential, and you'll see why. I've got my recording up here using the Steinway. So for orchestra, my very first layer, if I open up contact, uh oh, what is this? Oh, it was just loading. Kind of freak out there. Okay. So here we've got something called Session Strings Pro 2, and this is a contact library. Uh, the reason I like this one is because it has a more intimate sound. I like to keep it under orchestral velocity switch. I don't really play a lot with the velocities uh, and these different settings. I just keep it under sustain and accented. And this is kind of what I found works best for me. So just a quick sound. Uh, let's see how that one sounds. I haven't played it in a while. So the neat thing about an orchestra library is you're gonna be using the mod wheel a lot. That's how you're gonna be controlling your expression and your dynamic. Actually, my bad, that's a different library. So usually with an orchestra library, you're gonna be using the mod wheel a lot. In this case, this is one of those uh, ready to go out of the box. So let me show you how that one sounds. So the cool thing about keeping it under uh, sustain and velocity, of course, I've done some tweaks with the sub bass and the chroma, we chroma verb, which is the reverb. Um, these settings under the orchestral mode uh, allow kind of like a crescendo. The, the longer you hold a note, the louder it gets type of thing. So I really like this as a starting point for my orchestra. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and record that and you'll see it's right out of the box I just put those settings ready to go and we'll start building what I what I think is a realistic sounding library So let's go ahead and go here Okay, that was not perfect, <laughs> but you get the idea. It it's a it's a very basic, straightforward library. Um, it has a decent sound. I think if you really did not want to spend too much time into uh, you know fixing the volumes and things like that on on that particular library, this is ready to go out of the box. So. But I'm going to go a step further. I'm going to add the bassoon. I'm going to add a second orchestra library that I recommend that uses the mod wheel as a dynamic controller. So let's move forward. Okay, this is what Contact is proud of. Okay, they sell something called the Symphony Essentials. This is the basic version. And it's called Essentials because it's the light version, so to speak. And I use the string ensemble. And so for each of these, you can definitely play with them. You see, we have control to separate. If you wanted to separate every single portion of the ensemble, you can. 
I actually just went with traditional ensemble. That's what we just recorded. But now moving on, we're on to string ensemble. And again, you can separate them however you want, but because I'm not focusing so much on the nuance of an orchestra, I want just a real sounding out of the box feel. I don't want to spend a few hours, you know, that's not my specialty. I'm focused on the piano um, leading the melody. So I use string ensemble and you'll see the dynamic thing there. The mod wheel controls the dynamics and I, I found expression there, attack there, release, brightness. Don't tell me how I found that. It's just trial and error, playing around with the sounds. If you understand what those mean, maybe you can find that faster. But I also have mine under uh, reverb because I want that echo, that sound. So based on these settings, now we've got this next library. And you'll see the mod wheels controlling the volume. So this is gonna allow me to do more uh, variety. So let's see the same chord that I started with. That's full 100%. But if I wanted to do a kind of like a slow, uh, go with the romantic mood, it can go something. I think I'm gonna go for something like that and this one. So you could tell it's nothing special, but because you can play with the mod wheel, uh, the samples are already good. So if you can play with the mod wheel, add your bass and fine tune it, you get a real good realistic sound. So let's go ahead and add that layer now. So I think with this particular library, you can play a lot more with the dynamics, with the pattern you wanna do. Uh, this isn't the perfect recording, keep that in mind. I'm just doing it on the spot. I want to make it as real as possible. If I was going to do like a on the go, this is what it's going to look like just to get my idea out. As a composer, as getting that music motif, that idea, uh, you just want to record it right away. Uh, these out of the box make that happen and you can then refine it later. But let's move on. There's another layer to add. We've got our piano, we've got our bass orchestra and our bass dynamic orchestra to add a little bit more life. Now I want to add the bassoon. And the reason I add the bassoon is because I want a highlight, uh, kind of like an orchestral guide. And you can use different instruments for this. You can use the violin, you can use a cello, you can use a bassoon. I like the bassoon because the timber range is uh, different from the strings. So you differentiate where you're going in the chords uh, through the melody. So I'm gonna add that next and then I'll show you if you wanted to refine your orchestra, what layers you would have to add. Honestly, Embertone just makes my favorite instruments uh, the solo ones. Wow. Samples are very realistic. They're from real instruments, real musicians. The controls are ready to go out of the box. Very little to, pl uh, to have to mess with to get what you want. Um, so let's add the bassoon. Very minimal edits I do here. I'm on automatic articulation. It's gonna base it off of the velocity I'm playing. I leave all these the same. I usually just increase the reverb because I like a little bit more life and echo into that recording. So let's go ahead and go. Watch that video if you're interested in the bassoon. Okay. So we recorded the bassoon. Uh, you'll notice each instrument, you need to really understand that to make them realistic, you also need to understand how they work. And so the approach I'm taking with the bassoon is of guidance. So there's a lot of repetition. So you'll hear I was doing this a lot. It's it's a different instrument. You need to understand how those work together. So with, that was my approach with the bassoon, using repetition, using guidance to go into the next chord. Uh, whereas with the orchestra, I'm filling in, basically. Uh, the melody's already set by the piano. 
So I don't need the orchestra to outline that unless I'm making it repeat it afterward, which is a technique you can do. But if I'm playing a chord, I'm using the orchestra to fill in that gap to give it volume. So keep that in mind. Uh, the next thing I want to show you, and we're almost done here, is to beef up an orchestra. You do want more control. So I, I did very straightforward, full ensemble. If you want to add more, you want to do a separate bass, a separate treble. And what I mean by that is you could duplicate that same uh, original layer you made of that straight out of the box orchestra and record again, this time focusing on the basses, because what that's going to give is the full dynamic of that song. So that when you're listening to it on headphones or wherever your speakers, uh, you keep it with variety. You're not just here in the piano, so to speak. You want to add the fullness of the bass, the highlights of the treble to highlight different things in that melody. So you really have to think about where you want to go with the song. Uh, in this case, I won't go further, but that's just a tip that I recommend you do. Uh, there'll be another video where I do a full on recording again. I've done that in the past, but I didn't have all of these libraries. So I want to revisit that and show you how I would build a song basically and it'll be a lot less of me talking. If you are a composer, a musician, you get inspired with a music idea. Uh, these, I think I use three, these three orchestra related libraries, uh, straight out of the box, will get you that idea and make it real, added with the piano. Um, and it's gonna sound good. It's not gonna be the best, it's not gonna be professional, if you want it to be professional, you're gonna to have to spend a little bit more time. You can still use those libraries, just know you need to do more fine tuning. Uh, I'm not planning anything I just did right now. I like to play more like live, um, but if I was gonna record something to post, of course, I'm going to plan my, so to say, my moves so that the piano is guiding the melody, but the orchestra gives it that extra juiciness of highlighting certain sounds in certain parts. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to make more of these and I will continue to. I mean, if you check out my playlist, Music with Marv, you'll see tons of videos I already made. Some of them are already just my own recordings, but on some of them, I'm vis revisiting, uh, sharing my experience with these libraries, as well as what the recording process is from beginning to end from someone who's not educated in music production. I'm just passionate enough to want to learn it. So I want to share my uh, shortcuts with you. So thanks for watching. Stick around.